<laughs> Good afternoon. The huge audience we have for this session. I, uh, I hope you're not here just for the seats, <laughs> which is a possibility. My name is Ben Tegg. I'm from Back in Football. Um, we're one of the organisations hosting the CSO Zone. And today, I'm pleased this is here because I can read it. We're here to talk about working in harmony with the charity sector partnerships and the private sector partnerships there are around the football industry. And we're just here for half an hour, so it's quick. Uh, so we're going to dive straight into it. A couple of minutes introduction from each person to tell you who they are and where they're from. And then we're going to have a quick discussion around how those partnerships work, what are the positive parts of those partnerships and where they don't work. And if you want to, you're very welcome to ask some questions as well. So I'll start off with Tom, if you'd like to introduce yourself and explain who you are. Thanks, Ben. Uh, my name's Tom Colborn. I'm Tackle Africa's Head of Business Development. And Tackle Africa are a UK registered charity that work in East Africa, in Tanzania, Uganda and Kenya. Uh, and we found a way of delivering sexual health and HIV education using football coaching sessions. Um, and we train local coaches, school teachers and peer educators to deliver these interactive health and football sessions on a weekly basis across East Africa. Um, and our partnership with, with BT has allowed us to reach a further 3,000 kids, adolescents, boys and girls in Tanzania over two years with a weekly regimen of really interactive, highly effective sexual health and HIV education. That was a good, succinct explanation. Thank you. Uh, and Sam, you're here with two hats. Yeah, I am. Yeah, so Sam Shave, um, Sports Partnerships Manager at Comic Relief um, and also Project Manager on the Supporters Club. Uh, BT Sports Supporters Club. So um, the Supporters Club, which is kind of the, the real hat I've got on today, I suppose, is um, essentially BT Sports kind of um, social responsibility um, project. Um, and, and the Supporters Club really um, has three main main parts to it. We'll kind of come on to a little bit more about the partnerships in a, in a bit, but it's really got three main parts. So it's about um, raising money. So we, um, it's BT Sports um, customers, put a, a kind of put a pound, three pounds or five pounds, a month onto their, onto their bills. Um, that comes into Comic Relief, um, and BT and Comic Relief had a, have had a 20-year partnership. Um, and Comic Relief actually used their grant-making expertise to decide how that money is spent. So um, it sits in a separate pot. It's not part of the big Comic Relief pot, um, se a, a separate pot. Uh, and we fund a number of sports ch change charities, um, both here in the UK and, and overseas. Um, we funded 33 projects so far. Um, and the third bit of it, um, and really the bit where sort of BT Sport can add their expertise, is actually the telling of those stories. So we, um, we create a number of documentaries, um, and they are um, sort of showing the power of football or rugby or whatever the sport might be, and they get shown on the channel. So it's really spreading the word and, and actually um, kind of using BT Sport's expertise to um, increase awareness of the work that's being done um, through the sports club and through the sort of fantastic charities that we support. I hope that was succinct enough. Not quite as good as Tom, <laughs> but not bad. And Steve. Hi, uh, good afternoon. Steve Fleming, uh, co-founder of Kick to Life FC. We started off as a um, traditional charity delivering health education and life skills in a small country called Lesotho in southern Africa, uh, but have evolved quite uh, rapidly over the last 10 years um, to deliver a whole range of charity initiatives, but also with social enterprises. So we now run the country's top restaurant and hotel, providing employment to young people. Uh, and last year we tra transitioned from Kick to Life to Kick to Life FC because we now run um, a Premier League football club in Lesotho um, as a financially sustainable entity generating income but leveraging all of that to change lives in uh, Lesotho. And I think a couple of things to pick up on there because we're not all charity gods here. What is social enterprise? So, um, well, there's lots of different definitions, but essentially the way we, we view it is running um, what you might see as a traditional business, but with um, instead of making private profit, you're looking at achieving social outcomes. So you may be generating a profit, but that profit is reinvested in charitable work. Um, and also, uh, normally the enterprise would have a, a slightly other social element, so for example, employing, young pe employing and training young people. And Sam, you mentioned sport for change. What's that? So the idea of sport for change is essentially using sport as a, um, a tool for development. Um, it's kind of um, rather than just um, sport for sport's sake, it's actually, okay, what are the other outcomes that we can look at? Um, so whether that's confidence or, um, you know, in some cases actually CV writing or it might be using the power of a brand or a, a football club to actually get young people engaged. So it's the idea of using sport, um, not just um, the taking part, but actually what, it can, what else it can give you. Thanks. I think that makes, makes sense because a lot of people don't actually understand how we charity people talk about our work and I don't think we always make it accessible to people. 
So uh, one of the things I think is interesting, so we all use sport. We all use sport to engage people with stuff. But what has a charity got to do with football? Tom? Well, I think football is one of the most powerful things in the world for change, whether it's at the elite level with Didier Drogba being able to negotiate peace treaties in his country, right down to the grassroots activities of what kids all over the world, and particularly in Africa, want to do week in, week out. And that is a platform, when you're trying to, to change some of the world's most important problems, you need really powerful tools. And football is one of the most powerful tools, up there with education, I'd say, with schooling, for really accessing young people and, and being able to talk to them in a way that they really enjoy and understand and remember and tap into the things that they really want to achieve. So if you're a charity trying to achieve big changes with limited resources, um, you have to use football, in my opinion, to work with young people in certain parts of the world to, to achieve that change. So how do you work with football? How do you actually use football, Steve? Yeah, so some of our activities directly um, uh, incorporate messages into the session. So we might run a football training session similar to what Tom does at Tackle Africa, um, where there are life skills training built in, messages about HOV. Also, the environment we create. So we have a, a centre with football facilities, um, football uh, uh, players from our team are present. And when children come along, they want to be there. Uh, if we uh, went up to a 14-year-old lad in the street and said, why don't you come and have a, a test for HIV uh, at the local clinic? There's no way he'd do that. But if we said, come along and play football, and then at the end, we can provide some health education and testing. Um, we've got hund hundreds of people coming in every day and, and referring people testing positive onto onto treatment. So it's a, a really effective engagement as well as a delivery tool. And Sam, so, so, so with your BT Sport hat on, is, is that why you've looked at working with charities like, like, like these, that, that actually engage football, actually using the tools that you're showing on television, for example? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, as a, as a sort of with the corporate hat on, it, it's, you know, it's really, we talk about connecting our consumers to the causes they care about. That's a very kind of BT flashy line, but it's actually true. You know, these people are, you know, our customers are sitting there watching football, watching rugby on, on, on the channel. Um, if they are then giving a, a pound a month or whatever it might be on their bill, we then use as those documentaries I was talking about earlier to actually show what that money is doing. And that's a really powerful thing for someone to be able to, be able to, be able to see that they're giving that pound, these guys are making that change, and then we're demonstrating that. That, that suddenly, as a, as a consumer, you're thinking, okay, actually, that makes a little bit more sense now in terms of why I'm giving that. And actually, in terms of the knock-on effect to, um, to BT Sport, we know that people that are, that are aware of the supporters club have a better view of, of BT Sport. So it's actually, you know, it's a kind of win-win for everyone in that sense. So you're funding both of the, the charities here? So we right? fund both charities here, yeah. So we, um, as I say, the, the funding sort of strategy, we, we work very closely with, or BT Sport works very closely with Comic Relief, um, and we fund um, both, both these charities as well as charities in India and the UK. And, um, you know, again, a really important part um, for BT is actually in terms of their, in terms of their staff as well. Um, so looking at where, you know, whether they've got call centres in, in India, for example, you know, in, uh, around the country as well, around in the UK, and actually being able to make the, the staff aware of what they're doing and really proud to work for BT. That's another really, really powerful um, sort of use of, of the supporters club and, and shouldn't be kind of underestimated. So have either of you, the charities, have done, done any staff engagement with, with BT Sport or other partners? Uh, we've met with their, um, with their call centres in the UK, yeah. So they, um, BT raised the money for the supporters club by asking their, their subscribers to add a, an extra pound or three onto their regular BT Sport subscription. So it's all about engaging their call centres to make sure when they're talking to subscribers, they can really have, the Im they understand the impact that they can have. So we work with BT Sport and their call centres providers to, so that they understand the difference that that can make and they can explain that difference to the customer. So it really is an integrated, it helps us in Africa, it helps young people in Africa, but it helps BT and BT's customers as well. And, and I think that is the key to successful multi-sector partnerships is that it has to be mutually beneficial. And Steve, you, what is different between a partnership and what people normally expect from charities just coming along, putting a pound in the pot and feeling good for the day? Well, I think it's actually seeing the work that takes place and touching on the staff engagement bit as well. Um, quite often we, we work with corporates um, and their approach to deciding which charity they want to work with is they'll go and interview and survey their staff and say, well, what kind of, what kind of charities should we engage and quite often the, the first thing on the list is a sports-based charity or an arts-based charity because these are the interests of the uh, of the people working for the organization one of the things we've done with uh, another corporate is take a to a group of 20 people out from the UK to visit our project and um, they've stayed with us at our hotel we trained them in some of the activities and they've done work with the kids and they've actually seen the impact that their organization is having 
um, firsthand and contributed to it. It's a very powerful uh, engagement tool. And, and, and looking at the, the, the powerful engagement at the start, what about the customers? So are, your, are the corporate partners that you're engaging with and you as a, your, with your corporate hat, Sam, are you using this to engage your customers as well? Yeah, I mean, we, I mean when BT Sport was, was first set up, um, there was a conscious decision made that it wanted to be, you know, there was obviously the battle with Sky and, and BT made the conscious decision that they wanted to be with you, not at you. So, you know, it was felt that Sky was very, you know, and they do it very well, but they are very much, it's football, football, football. Actually, what BT Sport made the decision was it wanted to be slightly softer. It actually wanted to be a little bit more, um, you know, sort of showing that what sport can do. You know, it's this thing about what sport can do. So the, we go back to the, the thing about, you know, we're, some of these documentaries we've shown, we're showing them in, BT Sport showing them in the 45 minutes before kickoff. You know, that is absolutely prime time in terms of football fans. So we're not showing them at midnight on a Sunday night. You know, it, this is absolutely prime time and they're showing three minute documentaries. We then have slightly longer ones, half an hour, which we because we're tackle Africa. So it's kind of taken, we're not just sort of almost hitting the easy audience and trying to say, you know, these people that care about charity already, that's great, we'll tell them a bit more about it. We're saying the hardcore football fan that's sitting there 45 minutes that actually all, a lot of the time all they want to see about is their club, we're saying, you know what, we're going to take three minutes to say this is what the sports club are doing, this is what sport can doing. So that's a real, it's a genuine business decision to, to make it at the heart of BT Sport. So, so yeah, it, it's really important for the, the customers. So it's well. just as much a marketing decision as it's a doing good, let's help children in Africa decision. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'll, I'll go back to the point about, um, you know, we, we know we've done research that shows that actually BT Sport customers that are aware of the sports club and aware of the work that the sports club, sports club does feel more strongly beneficial towards BT Sport. You know, so, so they're sitting there going, okay, actually, I like BT Sport more as, a, as an organization, as a company, because I know what they're doing in the, in the good. So yeah, it's not just a, you know, it's great that we're changing lives and all the rest of it through that, but actually this is, a, this is a core business decision. I think that's been, been a quite a big change in terms of how charities engaged with everyone, not just the football industry over the past few years, in terms of how we do that. And uh, it is part of the, quite often a marketing budget. It's not just doing good. What I'm interested though, if, I, if I'm sitting here with a corporate and I've got a big budget, why would I invest in you rather than doing an advertising campaign that will get my exact message I want across to people? Well, I guess I would say that pretty much whatever business you're in, saving lives is good for business. Um, it would be very hard to find a customer of any business who wasn't turned on by that in some way. And you're looking at what can you get with your advertising. It's probably likely you can get a long way story and a lot more traction, especially through social media, which is a huge part of advertising these days through a really powerful story of how football is changing a life on the other side of the world, then you might do just by belting out your brand. So I think it's a smart way of advertising. And, and the additional benefits in terms of your customers being more engaged with you long-term, your staff being happier to work for you, your brand being more positive, that all feels like a really important kind of mix in, in a company's profiling. And it's a hugely successful way of, of making your brand current and relevant and attracting you uh, and current supporters. I think it's also worth mentioning that while um, it certainly is about branding and uh, marketing, we've noticed over the last 10 years that uh, companies have certainly become more accountable with their, their, their giving. In, in the early days, we were, we were given grants and uh, based on a two-page contract and it said, you know, get us a few nice photos and we'll be, we'll be happy now. We're there are proper structures in, pr in place. So, for example, BT Sport are using comic relief's expertise to ensure that they are genuinely supporting really good projects, and they're certainly not the, uh, the only ones. I think just the other thing I'd just add is that actually those two things aren't necessarily mutually exclusive. You know, you look at, I mean, the Barclays advertising campaign is only about walking football. You know, people are actually taking their corporate initiative, corporate social initiatives, and putting them in their advertising campaigns. You know, that, that to me just demonstrates how powerful they are. You know, these are huge organizations that can talk about loads and loads of different stuff. But actually, they are just deciding that the, the single most powerful thing they can do is to show what they're doing in communities. You know, that, that in itself, to me, says a, a huge amount. I think one of the figures we looked at earlier was, was, was seven out of the top 20 advertisers last Christmas, which was the key mm. advertising period, is when people spend money, all went on the line of, we're doing good, we're making social change. And I think that's applauded some of the message we're getting, trying to get across here today. I think it's also quite important that we look at, it's not just Africa. That, this, that these projects are going on here. There are as many projects here in the UK, and maybe swapping your hat, Sam, in terms of, the co in terms of comic relief, the Street League here, for example, and, and other, other organisations. Can it work in the, UK, in the UK as well? We talk about how we engage African children, see English kids out there and all sorts of other kids in the UK out there playing football just as much. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it works. You know, the, the, this sort of idea of the power of football is, is universal. It, it really is. And, and how you use it is, is probably subtly different. Um, you know, it's not going to be sex education. It's going to be maybe, um, you know, neat, so not an education, employment or training. It's going to be those kind of people that are, those kind of young people that, that we're talking to. And it's going to be maybe, um, you know, job skills, so CV writing, interview skills, that kind of stuff. So how you use it can be subtly different. But actually, this universal power of, of the game um, you know, similarly, coming really from the, the Premier League, have a fantastic partnership, which is about enterprise and, and you know, in, involving young people in, in business skills. You know, this is something that young people, do they really care about business? Well, no, not really, but you put an Arsenal badge on it, a Man United badge on it, a Man City badge on it, suddenly they go, oh, okay, that might be quite interesting. Not a Charlton badge? No. <laughs> okay. I don't think so, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. <laughs> I live in hope. <laughs> so if I'm a call for Tom, I'm coming to you. I've got... £30,000 in my marketing budget. What do you do for me? What do I get from you for that sort of money? Because if I go to ITV, if I go to the local newspaper, I know, I can see, there it is. I'm going to get that piece of advertising. I'm going to buy that product. What do I get from you for money? Um, well, I think the first thing we would do is, obviously, after saying thank you, is we would uh, <laughs> engage you in a discussion about, about mutual benefit. So we can show to you what £30,000 can do for young people in Africa. And you're talking about hundreds of thousands of hours of really effective interactive HIV education that young kids would not have got otherwise. And that's the kind of social return. And then we could talk about, do you, want, do you want your staff to be involved in that? Could they go and deliver some of the courses? Could they visit young people in their communities and do follow-ups? Could they work with our local partners and offer business support? Whatever your business is doing, there's a good chance there'll be a real demand for it, and that's a fantastic opportunity for your staff to be involved. Or it could be, how could we help you publicize it? So with BT Sport, we put together a 45-minute film using Alex Oxlade Chamberlain's The Host, which went out before the, before the FA Cup. Now, that is fantastic for us. We don't want to spend our donors' money on marketing. And even if we did, we wouldn't be able to reach that kind of audience. But it also gives BT Sport a fantastic story about the kids we're helping in Tanzania to tell t to their viewers about what a great thing BT Sport are doing. And it, again, it comes back to mutual benefit. You know, we do, we'll, ta we'll happily take handouts, um, but the long-term sustainable partnerships are the ones that really make a difference. And that's where... We can have an honest and productive strategic discussion at the start about what you want for your £30,000, what we can deliver, and how we can add extra value to that. Uh, I think what's interesting also is, is looking at the different ways that you use this and, and looking at how charities are developed. We're not all jumper-wearing, you know, apart from you. Um, <laughs> that, that sort of traditional charity person that we're expecting. Charities are far more professional now. And, and you've actually moved Kick for Life on quite a lot, haven't you? You've actually become a money generator in, 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 in lots of ways. And are you number one in your hotel in, in TripAdvisor in FC2 now or something? Yeah, so th there were two drivers for it, really. The first one was programmatic. So we were working with young people who um, were really disadvantaged. And what we wanted to do ultimately was support them into jobs, education, training. But with so few opportunities out there, we, we realized that actually we could start creating our own businesses where we could provide them with routes to uh, employment that were, were safe and secure and they could get the training they needed before going on into the into the wider world. The second driver was financial sustainability. So we had income coming from grants, through fundraising, and we saw social enterprise generating our own money as a really sustainable way uh, of, of bringing in funds um, and giving us greater independence of ho how we spent our money. Um, so yeah, we, we identified in Missouri, the capital of Lesotho, that there was a, a real shortage of high quality, high end restaurants but a growing demand from it, uh, for it and a growing middle class. So uh, we went through uh, a long business planning uh, process um, and launched last year. And today we're yeah, number one restaurant on TripAdvisor, employing 13 young people who had no experience before. And now everybody in the country is trying to tap up our staff. Um, but it's, it's incredible. This year we're looking at around about £100,000 uh, profit from the restaurant and the hotel, which will be reinvested directly back into... Um, our, our core charitable programs delivering health education. So it's a significant amount. So lastly, from the three of you, and you can, you can choose which hats I have. Um, what I'm interested in, if I'm sitting here and I'm working in the football industry, and most of the football industry people who work in the football industry, it's about making the money to run the industry. Why should I work with you? Tom? Well, again, I think we offer the chance to do real, lasting and quite exciting work in communities where you may already have a business interest. And it's definitely really important to look at what your CSR development strategy or advertising strategy or the staff recruitment strategy might be and how that can, how that can really dovetail with organisations that you're interested in or your staff are interested in. 
Ask your staff what they want to do. Ask your customers what they want your business to be doing in the future and look at ways to achieve that. And there are some incredibly effective, powerful, business-minded, productive charities working all over the world, any cause, any region, there will be somebody there making a really important difference. And enter into a dialogue with them. Commit to the strategy in the same way that you might commit to any other bit of your business strategy, with genuine resource, with genuine long-term thinking, and with a genuine commitment to make change. And it doesn't have to be huge, it doesn't have to be hundreds of thousands of pounds. You can make a huge difference with a small amount of money with the right partnership. And I think that's something that's going to be really exciting for business and for customers, and obviously also for young people all over the world who are in need of social change. Sam? I guess as a, a funder, I'll sort of answer it slightly differently in terms yeah. of what, in terms of, you know, why, why would we look at partnerships? How would we look at partnerships? And actually, the thing, you know, you go, I'll go back to the, you know, you asked about is there market benefits? There absolutely is, but the key of the supporters club actually is that we want to fund good projects. That, that you know, and that, that as a, as a, corporate is, is quite a change, the change you talk about, you know, it's kind of, it's moved from, okay, brilliant, let's put a, you know, a logo on a pack or whatever it might be, to actually, okay, what is the, the fun, what do, what do organizations bring to us that we can do? So we, you know, we work with Tackle Africa, the change they make is brilliant, but actually we took a film crew out, they facilitated that, you know, that for us is, is kind of, you know, it's really, really important to know that they're, they're able to do that, you know, we're moving on and we're, you know, there's BT My Donate, for example, which is a giving platform. We're going to start going to charities and actually say, look, can you, we're not going to force it on you, but can you use this? You know, so there's kind of, it's these things that come to us, but come to us with a real clear awareness of actually what you can give back to BT. Now, that seems like a strange way of looking at it, but, you know, we, you know, we're obviously, as a funder, you have a huge number of options. You know, we're a proactive funder. We've funded 33 projects, but it's kind of going, well, why do we fund X over Y? And actually, the understanding from the charity of what the business, of what the corporate's, business drivers are, are really, really important as well. So it's kind of just looking at it like, like that as well. But it's key to do the good work. Exactly, yeah. Steve? Yeah, well, there's, I mean, there's so much potential in the football industry for social change, and it's not just charitable, traditional charity pro projects. We're trying to show at Kick for Life that actually you can run uh, a financially sustainable, elite football club producing international footballers, which is actually leveraging all of that for social change. Imagine being a fan in your local community, supporting your local club, it's not only great to go and watch them in good fun, they're actually exi they exist to serve you and your, your family. That's what we're doing. Right, thank you, gents. I'll, um, we could open it up to the floor, or you can come and talk to them personally, uh, which might be an easier way to do it than open the floor. But has anyone got any questions that they would like to ask here? If not, you can, I'll throw these boys off the stage, and you can just grab... Yeah, easier to do it personally. <laughs> I agree with you as well. So thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, it's been really interesting, and I've learned something, which is quite good. <laughs> so thanks for coming as well. Really appreciate it.